Good morning, Cross Point kids. So happy that you're with us today. We're going to start things off again this morning with some live worship. So let's get on our feet and give some praise to our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Cross Point kids, hey, what is up? So good to be back with you again to worship the Lord together. Hey, we're happy that we can be together on this Sunday morning. So we want to encourage you to stand. We want you to sing as loud as you can because we're just going to praise the Lord this morning. He is worthy and that's why we sing. So let's sing this together. Night has fallen, the night has fallen, and fear is coming, still you're calling. Lost, hope exhausted, you will be my strength. With my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough. Hey, I've decided I'm not good enough. Your love won't give up on me, you won't give up on me. Your love is holding on.
Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you together as a family, you know, even when we're not together, as we continue to be uh, separated from one another. Uh, we praise you for um, technology and for community and for the ability to still interact with one another and, and have fellowship um, for the common um, desire to just praise you and give you the glory um, for everything that you give to us in our lives. Thank you for Nick for leading worship again for us this morning. Um, and thank you for our Crosspoint kids. Thank you for making them into the amazing individuals that they are. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Okay, Crosspoint kids. So uh, this is exciting. You probably saw in the countdown video this morning that um, our graphics this month have green slime on them. And that reminded me that back in December, you all were able to uh, watch me have green slime dumped on my head because you brought in 600 cans of food for our night of thanks. And you helped out our community in a big, big way by doing that. So I wanted to reward you again by getting to watch that video. This has absolutely nothing to do with our lesson plan today, but I thought, hey, let's watch this. Why not? Let's have a little bit of fun this morning. So check this out. Let's all count down from five. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Woo-hoo! <laughs> oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Oh man, 
So here's something kind of cool. I'm actually wearing the same shirt that I was wearing in that video when I got slime dumped all over myself. It didn't stain. Everything came out. I didn't have to get a new t-shirt. So that's exciting. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I thought we would just have a little bit of fun with it this morning. And remember the times that we got to spend when we were still together and look forward to being together once again, okay? So this month, we are in a new series. We're going to be talking about determination, and we are defining determination as deciding that it's worth it to finish what you started. And our theme is unstuck, don't give up. Wow. I think God knew that we were going to need this lesson plan. I don't know about you. I feel like I need some determination right now. I didn't see this coming. God did. He knew that we were going to be in this season. I was caught off guard, and my life's been shaken up quite a bit. I've been shaken up because I haven't been able to leave my house very much. I haven't seen my extended family very much. I haven't been able to go to church and see all of you. My life looks a lot different right now than I thought it was going to look. And because of that, it requires determination. I know you all feel that same way as well. And we need to figure out what we need to do to keep moving forward and deciding that it's worth it to continue plugging along even during times when things seem confusing, okay? So that's what we're going to be focusing on. And here's the great thing. The Bible is full of examples of people who needed determination to get through whatever situation they were in. Person after person in the Bible required that determination from God to do great things, just like we need determination to do great things. And some of those people were Jesus' disciples. As we're going to learn about today, his disciples needed determination when they were asked to spread the word of Jesus Christ to the entire world. Guys, let's wrap our minds around that for a second. Jesus gave them the instructions to share the good news about Jesus, about himself, to all nations around the whole world. That's a big task, and it required determination to get it done. In fact, it probably seemed impossible to some of them. Today, we're going to look at how they overcame those feelings of maybe discouragement and impossibility to have determination to get the job done, okay? So we're going to start things off in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and we are in verses 19 and 20. So this is when Jesus had risen from the dead, and he is in that, we're in that 40-day period where he is still showing himself to his disciples, walking the earth, and they're still able to interact with him. He's risen from the dead, okay? And he asks his disciples to meet them on a mountain in Galilee. And this is what Jesus says to them. He says, you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can be sure that I will always be with you to the very end. Listen to that last part one more time. And you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. So when I read this, I don't know why, but I picture a coach talking to his or her team, maybe a soccer team or a softball team or a dance team, and giving them instruction, laying out the plan on what they need to do to get the job done. You might have been in a situation like that, maybe a school setting where the teacher was giving you instructions on how to, how to do uh, your homework, but you can probably all imagine a situation where there's a leader or a coach or a teacher explaining how to do something. That's what Jesus was doing. He was giving the disciples uh, their mission. He was telling them, you must go and make disciples of all nations, Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. 
Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. So they're listening and they're probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed because this is a huge job that Jesus is giving them. But he says, be sure that I will always be with you to the very end. That's got to fill them with peace and confidence because they've seen Jesus do amazing things. They've seen him work miracles. They've seen him walk on water. They've seen him raise people back to life from the dead. They've seen him raise back to life from the dead. So they're feeling pretty good about this, okay? As we continue on, we're now going to jump over to the book of Acts, chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 4, 5, and 8. Now, this is a continuation of the same story. It's just a little bit later in the timeline, and it's a different book. Um, but in this scenario, Jesus has asked his disciples uh, to meet him uh, a little bit outside Jerusalem in an area called Bethany. Uh, so let's take a look and see what Jesus says to his disciples here. It says, One day Jesus was eating with them. He gave them a command, Do not leave Jerusalem, he said. Wait for the gift my father promised. You have heard me talk about it. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. So my thought is that after hearing this, the disciples were likely a little bit confused, a little bit anxious about what Jesus was asking and telling them. Uh, he, you know, remember that the disciples, they didn't have the Holy Spirit with them yet. Jesus was telling them that the Holy Spirit was coming in the form of a gift. Um, and they couldn't relate to that yet. They had not felt that yet. And they just had no idea how they were going to be going around the world, sharing this news about Jesus with people that spoke a different language than they did and had completely different beliefs than they did. But they were being told to wait. And they had been told back in the book of Matthew that Jesus would be with them always until, for at all times, he would be with them no matter what. And uh, they could have confidence knowing this. But let's look at what the very next sentence in the book of Acts tells us. If we look at Acts 1-9, it says this. After Jesus said this, he was taken up to heaven. The apostles watched until a cloud hid him from their sight. Jesus! Jesus! I think he's gone. The Bible goes on to tell us that after Jesus was raised up to heaven and disappeared behind the clouds, the disciples literally stood there staring at the sky. Likely a combination of disbelief and fear, seeing that their guide, their coach, their Messiah had, had left them. Uh, they probably felt some joy, too, uh, knowing that Jesus was going up to heaven. Um, but let's think about this. Jesus had just given them an unbelievable task, a monumental, seemingly impossible task. And then he left them. He went up to heaven. So this was the moment, in my opinion, when the disciples needed that extra push of determination. They needed to find something within themselves to keep going, even when things seemed very, very difficult and maybe even impossible. So I bet you can relate to at least some moment in your life when maybe you didn't have that person that you would turn to for guidance right next to you or with you at that moment. Maybe it's a coach uh, on your, your soccer team or your dance team um, that couldn't be there that day. Or maybe your, your team captain 
that couldn't be there that day to lead your team. Maybe you feel that right now with school, you don't have your teachers with you in your classroom, and so you're having to find some extra motivation and determination to do your homework and get your tasks done when your teachers aren't there to encourage you uh, every day. Maybe you have a mom or a dad who is out of town sometimes and uh, you can't talk to them um, face to face. And so you have to um, you know, find determination and encourage yourself to get through those times um, and find strength to, to deal with that. But whatever the situation is, I bet we can all think of times when uh, we've had to find determination uh, to get through something tough. And this is the moment for the disciples. But as we know, God always has a plan that's bigger than what we can see. In the very next moment, as the disciples are there staring at the sky, wondering where Jesus has gone and um, what they're going to do now that he's not with them, let's read what happens. In Acts 1, 10 and 11, it says this, Suddenly, two men dressed in white clothing stood beside them. Oh, man! Josh, I guys gotta come out of nowhere like that. Give me a heart attack. Where did you come from? Men of Galilee, they said. Why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. So it is my belief that this was God's encouragement to the disciples. Jesus sent these two angels that gave them the extra push, the nudge that they needed to go on. Our bottom line today is keep going even when things seem impossible. In our story today, these disciples were given an impossible task. What they felt like was an impossible task. What we're going to learn in the coming weeks is that they continued this task. They moved forward with determination. The Holy Spirit is going to come and the Holy Spirit's going to give them what they need to get this done. Here's the cool thing, boys and girls. Today, you and me, we are tasked with this same mission that the disciples were given. We are asked to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to the people in our lives that need to hear it, just like the disciples were. And guess what? We have the Holy Spirit just like they were given the Holy Spirit. We're going to learn more about that next week. But as we go into that lesson, just know that in this moment today, these disciples, they found the encouragement that they need to move forward. We likely have situations in our life right now that seem impossible. It might seem impossible that we're going to be able to finish out the school year without being in an actual classroom. We might be in a fight or an argument with a brother or a sister at home because we've just spent way too much time together and we don't know what to do with ourselves. And we might feel like it's impossible that we ever make up with them and, and can talk to them again. We maybe have lost a grandma or a grandpa in recent months or years, and it might feel impossible that we're going to be able to get over that loss and, and feel whole again on the inside because we miss them so much. It might feel impossible right now that we ever get to see each other again and give each other a big bear hug and a high five. It might feel like we're never going to be able to get out of this quarantine season that we're in. But God has a plan for us, and he makes it clear, as he did in this story today, that when things seem impossible, he gives us what we need. And what he asks of us is to find the determination within ourselves. And that determination can come from having faith, from knowing that we have the Holy Spirit. 
that Jesus and God has given to us. Our memory verse this month comes to us from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 9. And it is, let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. This memory verse is showing us today is that when we keep doing the right thing, we have a reward waiting for us. What it's telling us is not only will the people around us benefit from our determination, our desire to keep pushing forward, but we, on God's terms, when the time is right, have a good crop waiting for us. Boys and girls, stay on the straight and narrow path. Even when things get bumpy and difficult, keep going. Keep moving in a positive direction. Keep doing good things. Even when it seems like you might never be able to get along with your brother or your sister again, keep praying and asking God for help and he'll, he'll work it out for you. Even when it seems like you, you're not going to be able to get to the end of this school year, your teachers aren't with you, you're not in your classroom, the end of the race just feels too far away, you're not able to focus on schoolwork because you're trying to do it on a computer or a tablet, keep going. Get to the finish line. Stay determined. And a reward is waiting for you. Keep up the good work. Stay encouraged. As we learn today, even when we have an impossible task in front of us, keep going. Do good. Others will benefit, and you will benefit from doing so.
promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who God, as we close today, uh, we thank you for this series on determination. We know that you gave this to us as you give us everything. And Lord, we are thankful for it. Uh, help us to uh, just find the strength within ourselves when things seem impossible. Help us to find uh, the encouragement. Help us to find uh, the push and pull of your Holy Spirit on our hearts when we don't know what to do. Help us to ask the question, what would Jesus do? As we talked about a couple of weeks ago, when we feel confused and when we feel unmotivated, give us the reminder that you're with us so that we can do seemingly impossible things with your help. We give you the glory, God, and we thank you for everything that we have. In your holy name we pray, amen. Okay, Cross Point kids, it's been so great being with you again today. I look forward to continuing on this story next week as we see how these disciples were able to spread this amazing news with the help of the Holy Spirit. Have a great week. We'll talk to you really soon.